With all things that we're doing, we're diving into the mod today. And that's right, we are the Breadbox Privateers working for the Outworlds Alliance, having ourselves a good, fantastic time. And uh, let's see where the heck we are on the star map. Oh, buddy, where are we even at here? That's right, we are up in Cretan space. For some reason, they like us a lot. Um, the clans up there, assumably, do not. And that's all right, that's A-OK -okay with us. Because uh, we're not going to be able to tackle them anytime soon. However, for the Outworlds Alliance, we were sent out here basically as privateers to cause issues for the Cretan Alliance, as well as, you know, the Federated Sons and stuff like that down here. Apparently, the Cretans have not gotten the memo. Uh, we've done a lot of missions for them, and uh, that's all right. We are playing on some of the hardest difficulty settings that you can find for the mod. Oh, man, eight pieces per mech. Everything else is on Stingy. It's very, very difficult to do, and uh, it's a lot of fun. We've already lost our first medium mech that we've ever built here in this particular playthrough, which would be the Dervish. Sad days. Um... Thankfully, we do have a Vulcan. <laughs> it's not usually often that I would say that. We do have a Vulcan 2T um, kitted out for smash and grab, which is pretty cool, with an ER large laser on it for that long-range plinking if we need it. And it's worked out pretty darn good. So without further ado, let's dive in and see what we got here for some contracts. And I do want to give a shout-out here to some sneaky follows since the last time we streamed. Matt Chewy, thank you for the follow. Carthoon, thank you for the follow. And SuperNick02. If you're out there watching, hopefully things are going well for you, whether you're catching this live or over on video on demand. Hopefully things are happening fantastically well. And again, again, many, many, many thanks for Zambies and any Minis as well for following the channel. All right, so what are we diving into today? So we are trying to tackle two and a half skull missions traditionally. Um, with the loss of the Dervish, that's going to be a little bit more harder to do. Uh, unfortunately, there are there's nothing on this planet to buy. There's nothing in the store, so we can't get that last piece of a griffin and get another medium mech thrown around. So we're going to try to find uh, one here on the battlefield. It's not always that I'm really excited to dive into and say, hey, I want to fight a griffin 1N. But as Garrison would say, it's exciting times. He loves those things. So, ah, man, what do we want to do here? We got a lot of uh, two and a half skull missions here. Uh, we are close to our self-imposed upper limit before we switch over to salvage, so 1.5 to 2.5 million sea bills. Once we're in the middle of that, we just leave the sliders in the middle when we select our mission type. When we go above 2.5, we're going to prioritize salvage. So I don't want to take any too crazy high salvage missions. Um, there is a duo duel here. Now, I have not done these just yet. This looks like a lot of fun. I don't think going into it with a Vulcan and a light mech is really what we need to do. Uh, so we'll see. We'll probably hold off on that for the moment. Um, a lot of high salvage stuff here. We could kind of go a little bit easier, but uh, I don't know, man. It's really, really, really difficult. So let's see. Hmm. Training day could be an easy way to dive into this. This could be an easy way to do this. Um, and it's on a tundra, so we're not going to run too hot. I think this is probably the best bet to go for. The pay is really, really good. The salvage is pretty decent as well, and if we absolutely hose her this one up, then it's not too bad. So, let's see. Then we're going to dive into this one here. We're going to leave the sliders right in the middle. Three quarters of a million sea bills. Pick one, get six. Not too shabby. Again, we're against the pirates. They pretty much, yeah, we're not we're not friends with them this time around, and that's all right with me. We're going to get that accept button. We're going to dive in here and see what we got rolling on. Let's see, what do we have? We have Stubble with the commando, three, two, two, one. Uh, Flapjacks, that's a new one, with Urban Mech and 3-2-1-2. So again, Gunnery is pretty good. Three's across the board here. And then Pontoon, Gunnery 1-2-1-3 in the Urban Mech. Thankfully, Tactics is up a little bit more, so we're going to at least have someone that can kind of keep an eye out for things. Uh, Data King 1 is still pretty tuckered out. we got the Vulcan over here. The question is, who do you want to stick into the Vulcan? Now, we do have the ER Large Laser. Oh, man. Oh, Tug says he's sad. Hopefully you're doing all right, Tug. Miss your face, man. You're doing fantastic. No worries. You got this, buddy. You got this. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the channel, man. Good to see you, Fred. Oh, man. Oh, what do we want to do? The question is, do we want to smash and grab? Because we can do this uh, particular... Um, uh, let's see here. We can do these different things. <laughs> Tug says he left my Discord because he hated me. No, man. I did not leave your Discord. I'm still hanging around there. Uh, I'm just taking a step back from a lot of uh, Discord and a lot of social media stuff. It's because I don't have time. I have a lot of stuff going on, and I can't devote enough time to it. So just letting people know, hey, man, 
It's kind of pulling back a little bit, and I'll have a pile of email in my inbox, as it were, checked back in. And uh, we're here. We're chatting. We're hanging out, man. Man, Tug, you are fantastic. I love you. You're super fantastic. Super, super cool, dude. And besides, man, you got that tugboat life rolling on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tug's like, yeah, I have zero presence on Facebook. Yeah, man, it's it's just kind of the same thing for maybe probably different reasons. Just pulling back just a little bit. I just don't have time to catch up on it. Um, I'm finding myself further and further and further behind trying to catch up on uh, different uh, posts and groups and things that I'm supposed to be checking in with, as well as a few that I'm supposed to be uh, moderating and going through. So I'm trying to prioritize different things and uh, just focusing on what time I have. Uh, my schedule is very, very brittle with a new mini toast floating around the house. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressures in real life too to make stuff happen because this this is my secondary job so to speak right um, YouTube and Twitch is a lot of fun I enjoy it it's a hobby but I'm trying to set the foundational groundwork to make sure that if it does take off if I do have those opportunities that I can reach out and grab them and uh, so just trying to juggle all that stuff and uh, the family here the group here is fantastic and you're part of that man you're absolutely part of that a lot a lot of fun so that's the question who <laughs> do you want to stick at the Vulcan um, you know what. Let's go for it. Let's take a tug bobo on the Vulcan. It should be good. Giant punch bot. Uh, we do have the ER large laser, which a gunnery of two, not the best for doing that long range fighting. However, with all those small lasers and all the smash and grab actions going on, piloting of six with a tug bobo, as well as the sure footed feet, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good bet. Oh, man. <laughs> Tugs this leg. Vulcan hot dog scoopers, Mac. Ah, that's right. Super hot. Oh, buddy. What did you say up there? Vulcan Hoyt. Vulcan Hoyt dog super, Mac. I like it. I like it. Let's hit the deploy button and let's dive in. Oh, Darius is going to be a difficult mission, but Tug's used to that. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. This mission could flex up from a two and a half skull to a three and a half skull. And if we have to bail him back on out, we are definitely going to do that. But in the moment, We'll see what we can do. I have a feeling that, um, yeah, I've got a feeling that our commando is probably going to kick the bucket again, as is usually the case. But the pilot usually survives crazily enough, and that's all right. So how's everybody's day going? Hopefully it's going well. If not, hopefully we can make it a little bit better. Uh, we're digging ourselves pretty dig deep holes. Throw some words up there. English is hard here today. And we're going to try to dig ourselves back out of those holes in Battletech. It's always a pile of fun, always an absolute blast. I always enjoy making mistakes here in this game and then trying to find a way out of them and through them. Uh, this is part of the gameplay. You have to accept it, especially if you're playing on higher difficulty settings. And because uh, you're going to make a mistake somewhere at some point along the way, you might as well dive in. It should be a OK. Good to go. No questions asked. Should be all right. Now, hopefully, hopefully everything continues to move. It looks like it is chunking through just a little wee bit. And uh, hopefully the stream is not shortened up too much today. Um, we are playing on the newest version of Battletech. That's right. The most recent version of the mod is going to be Bex3025. And I think it was updated a couple, about a week ago. And then a hot patch with the latest update came out about a week after that. So there we go. Looks like we're doing pretty good. So it's got brand new uh, AI in there. Mod from Amec Warrior included. And so the AI is going to be more difficult. <laughs> so <laughs> this two and a half skull mission might be more difficult than... You know, we expect, and that's all right. Oh, man. What do we got here? Objectives are destroy the enemy lands and keep trainees alive. This battle, still three quarters of a million seabills. Pick one, get six, two and a half skulls. Let's see what we got down here in the voice bag. Oh, man, here's one that we haven't done in a while. All right, hold on to your hats. Here we go. Oh, we're trying to build that local defense force of the mech warriors here on Osmosa. Our pilots are inexperienced and untested, and we'd like you to help us train them. We've picked up a troubling signal which may represent hostile activity, which seems like a good opportunity to send our new defense force out to handle it. Can you bring along an experienced mech warrior and a mech to keep them out of trouble? That is your mission. I can only imagine what kind of junk heaps these locals are going to be piloting. I'm expecting Irby's. Bring along something tough, Commander. Oh, man, Darius. Oh, we're going to dive into it, hit that begin mission button and see just how utterly hosed the sideways and on fire we are. This is going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. I'm really excited about this. I hope we see some fighting. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. We didn't do very well at the practice range. Just because you almost blew up the observation bunker. 
<sighs> right. Anyway, Commander, I'm seeing a single pirate lance here. Like, actual pirate mechs with real guns? I can't wait. I'm going to kick their butts. It kick, it, it's, you know what? Never, never mind. Have fun, Commander. I'll be on station. Meet me here when you're ready to leave. Oh, man. Wait. Where, where, where are you going? I just figured out how to turn on my radio. <laughs> oh, man. This is worse than usual. Oh, man. Seawool101, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. Hopefully your day is going well. If not, hopefully we can make it a little bit better by our horrible strategy tactics and having a lot of fun. Oh, man. Let's see what happens. Destroy the pirate forces. All, all friendly mechs must survive. Well, that sucks. That means we can't, we can't lose one. This just got a lot tougher. This just got a lot tougher. Let's see where we are. We are not in a corner over there. We are not in a corner over here. So with that being the case, we could see reinforcements on either of our flanks. Not super ideal. I mean, all, all of the mechs must survive. That sucks. Oh, well. Well, let's go up against the pirate forces. No idea what they're going to have up there. Ready for orders. Hmm. And it includes our own mech, too. That sucks. So what we that basically means we cannot save scum. Not that I'm going to do that or ejection scum. But for those of you that are out there that are going to be trying these missions, keep that in mind. That could be a problem. Um, if you got different things rolling on and you kind of wanted to work through these missions, rolling. that could be an issue. They're coming out in a pincer movement. Thankfully, we're back far enough that we're not going to be caught in the middle and we can figure out where we want to rotate. We don't have much maneuver room over here on the right. And this does break out uh, out of woods. We do have some potential line of sight blocking terrain here, which could be useful. We could rotate left. There's a lot of a huge exposed regolith up here onto a cliff. We could get a height advantage, but we're going to spend a couple turns to get up there. Oh, man. Kind of want to rotate right, all things considered. Because even if we dive straight forward into the teeth of this, we're going to be fighting over this. It's not super good. Hmm. We'll get the urban mech to sprint over there. And uh, we'll have uh, Tug Bobo roll up here with the Vulcan, and we'll see kind of what happens. Oh, no. Chat, I think we just got ourselves a three and a half skull bishop. I don't think this is going to work out very well. <laughs> uh, Seawolf has been hammered. Hammered my way through Rogue Tech. Decided to chill and watch you suffer. Oh, man. Well, thank you very much for stopping on by, man. It lo it's looking like we're going to suffer pretty bad. <laughs> it's looking like it's going to be pretty rough. We'll see how this goes. Hey, uh, XO, I'm tracking an inbound blip coming in fast and low like they're making a drop off. Keep us updated, buyer. Well, hopefully they're going to fight these peeps. I don't think that's going to be the case, though. Well, we are not going to rotate to the right anymore. <laughs> we are going to rotate to the left across this horrible expanse. And if we can, maybe try to make for these trees. Um, that'll give us something to continue rotating clockwise for up here. And reposition to tackle whatever the heck this is. Assuming we survive that long. That's going to be kind of the big deal. Oh, man. That is rough. Let's see, we're going to send uh, Tug Bobo up here. We're going to see what we're dealing with. Uh, it's a Phoenix Hawk, so it is definitely... We're in a bad way. It is 50% of the armor, so that's not too shabby. That's pretty good. Um, oh, man, this is... I have a feeling this, this is going to be an issue. This is going to be an issue. Yeah, large laser rolling in, grabbing the leg. Not too shabby. What's the enemy going to be doing here? Oh, man, they're rolling in. And it's a medium medium laser so it's either strip and evasion pip or it is something else that's really light that we can tackle relatively easy we'll see how it goes my bet is we're gonna get hosed but it's all part of the fun seawolf says at least most of them aren't your mechs that are gonna die that's true so we're not gonna be we're just gonna have a really heavy conscience <laughs> and a lack of sea bills thankfully it's not gonna be a lack of mechs um last time we streamed we lost our dervish, which was the first medium mech that we actually built. That really sucked. Um, that's really hurting us right now. Because I would much rather have taken the dervish, all-out missile spam, instead of just going with the Vulcan. So, hey, Craig, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the channel, my friend. Oh, buddy. Afternoon Chronic, he says, man, how's your day going? We're uh, rolling in with a difficult situation. All our mechs must survive. We've got pontoon and flapjacks and stubby over here. 
And uh, reinforcements on the way. So this two and a half skull mission, it's it's gotten a little bit bigger. It's gotten a little bit bigger indeed. Um, let's see. We can't really get eyes on with the mech, so we're just going to let that continue to float around and sit there for a little bit uh, until we can figure out something else. So we'll see what happens. Kirk says, doing good? Oh, that's really good to hear, man. Uh, here in Utah right now, we're getting a pile of forest fires burning here in our state, and then we're getting a pile of smoke from the entire state of California blowing in. And so the air quality is really bad. I don't know if you can hear my voice or not, but there's... Like, I'm going through brand new furnace filters every three days. <laughs> They're supposed to last two, two and a half months. It's really bad. So, pretty much, it's hunkering down inside and hanging out with kiddo and uh, Mrs. Toast and generally just trying to not breathe uh, all that carbon in the air. It's not super good for you. So, Commander. let's see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Urban mech? We have two R60 urban mechs. I did not realize that. Hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Chat. It's going to be an adventure. Buckle up. Oh, goodness. At least we can get some shots here. Uh, So we're going to do that. I forget if Flapjacks is the one. I think it's Pontoon that's got the crap gunnery. So 71% not too shabby. And uh, we did get a solid hit in there. An AC-10, which is good. t Wilson's says making a run for it isn't an option then. Um... Well, we can definitely bail out of this mission and withdraw. I have no qualms about doing that. Uh, we're not, we're privateers. We're the Breadbox, you know, brigade. And uh, Breadbox privateers. We're doing good. It's all right. But if it gets, if the going gets too tough, <laughs> there's a panther up here. Um, we can definitely bail on out of this. I'm not too worried about that. We're going to get a commando up here. The only one that hasn't gone is this back mech. We've got no idea what it is. There's a stinger, a panther, and a phoenix hawk. Now, if we get this phoenix hawk taken care of, we can then dogpile this panther, and then we'll we'll mop up with whatever's left up here, and it should be okay. My fear is this right back here is going to be another medium mech, so yeah, we'll see. See, well, says with two Irbies, it'll be a waddle for it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thankfully, our um our commander does pack a punch. Unfortunately, we're not really well suited for all this long range junk. We're gonna reserve with this other urban mech. Nothing's within range. Maybe something to wander in. Oh my gosh. Ah! <laughs> yep. Yep. So far, so good. This is going to be an adventure chat. Oh, I've missed this. <laughs> I've missed this so much. Wandering in, everything's on fire, upside down, inside and out. You're just trying to figure out what's next, you know? Oh, so good. Um, ooh, we do have range on whatever that is. Hmm. Ooh. We're gonna wander. We're gonna wander over here. Why not? Um, not the best chances to hit, and it's a one gunnery pilot. So, uh, sure, we'll shoot the thing that's got a higher percentage. Why not? AC ten, and we actually hit. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Pontoon man, chalk it up to the one the one gunnery pilot. Oh no! <laughs> oh wait a minute. Commander, I've got eyes on a new lance in the AO. Looks like Merrick markings. Chat, this is actually a huge bonus because we're fighting pirates, and Merricks, they're not the pirates. So hopefully they're going to fight each other. It's looking like possibly an enforcer? Not really sure what that is. Something small and something smaller, so. Hey, that hollow. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. How's it going? We're uh we're in it deep this time, man. Not in a good way. Not in a good way. Oh man. Oh, uh, was was that supposed to happen? You did a good job, Pontu, and you shot off his leg. What what do we do now? We kill the new guys too, just like in the hollow vids. Up to you if you want to engage the new targets, Commander. If not, Sumar will make the pickup in the Evac LZ. Oh man. It's an adventure. It's a painful adventure. Hey, the Phoenix Hawk is doing us a solid. Unfortunately, it is wrecking our commando. We cannot lose a single mech. And uh, we're not in a good position to fall back. Simply because they are so far out of the way back here. Oh, man. Tug Bobo is thankfully nearby and kitted out for melee fisticuffs in combat. 
So uh, we're going to do that. We're going to have Tug take the brunt of the damage up here if we can. And smash and grab. Time for those patent pending Tug hugs. Oh, buddy. Three, two, one. Here we go. Smash. Structure exposed. Oh, man. In comes the quads lasers. Bazap, 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 bazap. <laughs> the Phoenix Hawk is still in one piece. Not good. Not good. Oh, our command is pretty much done. We got to pull that back. That sucks. That sucks a lot. Oh, man. Womp, womp, womp. Um, can we get out of... Oh, can we still get out of this? Out of line of fire and still in... Ooh, we're going to back up just a little bit. This is all our left side, so we're going to rotate to the right and protect that as much as possible. And um, so we are on the latest version of Bex 3025, which is pretty cool, Commander's Edition. Um, keep in mind that, uh, here, I'll show you guys when it's next up, but we're going to blast this uh, Phoenix Hawk with everything we can. But keep in mind that um, when you go to rotate and torso twist in this version of the mod now, the latest version, for, um, hey, they're stressed, for uh, uh, positioning and weapon arcs, the, uh, the arc that's painted out on the ground is no longer necessarily accurate. Some mechs can twist additionally far based on lore. And so keep an eye on your available weapons, um, available weapon uh, arcs and stuff like that because the, the arc that's available for the torso is, is pretty hard-coded. So, for example, you can see it here on the ground. Um, but look at this. So you can say, oh, the arc on the ground is, is a fixed 120 degrees. I'm going to only torso twist this mark. I can still keep them in arc. Well, the Urban can actually go further because the way that the top is set up. So you can just keep on going. Look at this. You're basically giving them your rear and side armor and still being able to shoot them. That's really cool. That's legit really cool. I'm super excited about that. Um, so that being the case, we're going to front towards the enemy and get within small laser range and just blast away. Here we go. Boom. There it is. Left torso, left arm destroyed. Oh, yeah. That's a pilot injury for sure. Ammo explosion and he's gone. Oh, baby. Somebody just got dosted. Oh, yeah. I think that deserves cracking open a Werner's ginger ale. Oh, man, my friends in the Midwest know what I'm talking about. Oh, buddy. Mmm, good stuff. The best cure-all out there. Werner's ginger ale, the original ginger soda. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, let's see what's going on here. What do we got? We still have to deal with a panther, a shadow hawk, and a stinger. Now, they're over here. I got to keep ourselves out of their range of fire. So hopefully the, the American reinforcements come in and prioritize them, but we're in it right now. We got to keep focusing in, unfortunately for us one way or the other. Um, so we're going to keep jumping along if we can and, uh, getting as far over here as we possibly can. And, uh, just generally working our way through it. We want to keep that right arm as m protected as much as possible Hi. simply because from these mechs, because that's our AC 10. And while we can't necessarily have a good high hit percentage, we are doing a good job of eliminating things with a one gunnery pilot. And this mech is down, so we're going to go for the CT. And there we go. There's a miss. Blew up the tree right in front of the uh, the mech. <laughs> ah, it is what it is. The question, though, is how are we going to deal with this? So our commando is shot to pieces. Um, and they're focusing down the commando. So this is some new AI behavior, which is pretty cool. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us, um, AMAC Warrior updated their brand new AI mod, gotten in there and messed with the, the AI uh, command and control trees and stuff like that, Decision, the decision logic. And um, the AI is definitely focusing down damage mechs. So we're going to have to pull this commando back even further. Um, it's really, really cool. I really enjoy already these updates here. Um, but it's really cool, man. So what do we want to do? We want, we want to get in here and smash and grab. So we're going to go for the Panther. We're going to focus on this right arm up here. Thankfully, it is half down in armor. If we can get this right arm smashed and grabbed with Tug Bobo in the Vulcan, we should be good to go. No ER large laser this time. We're just going in and punch and dash and small laser out. There's a big kick. Structure exposed. Get those quads. Lasers of doom rolling on in. Go get him, Tug. And there it is. The PPC is down. And we got ourselves a torso explosion. Oh, man. That's going to be a pilot injury for sure. Stinger's jumping over and focusing on Tug. That's okay with me. It's got the 3G, so it's got the two medium lasers in there. Um, thankfully, it's not quite as much on the MGs, but it is a bit more dangerous than your usual variant. Yes, We're going to continue to get our Urban Mech pulled in here because we have those reinforcements up here at some point. They're going to come in and just cause us all sorts of problems. We're going to try to keep pulling back from them as far as we can. 
Um, 62%, 42%, or 17%. We're going to go for the Panther. Why not? It should be all right. We miss, of course. We are getting the accuracy bonus as well because we are about 50% on the resolve. But for a one gunnery pilot, it's not working out very well. Two gunnery can do the job. It works out just fine. But one gunnery, oh, man, it's really, really... I don't know why the breakover is the way that it is, right? Because you think one to two gunnery isn't that much of a bonus if you're looking at the pilot upgrade track. But it certainly seems that way for sure. So for anyone that's out there in chat or watching this over on YouTube when it's posted up live over there at some point... Um, let me know, have you ever run into a situation where a one gunnery pilot has just consistently uh, just rocked your socks off, man, done a really fantastic job? Um, the opening salvo that we had here with Pontoon just completely legged this entire stinger, which is pretty good. But as you can see, we're having consistency issues. But I'd be curious to know if anyone's got a story or a tale from where the, the dice and the probability curve landed in their favor quite often. That'd be pretty cool to see. But what are we going to do? Oh, man, we're going to leave... Uh, the commando back there. And we're going to hop up here um, if we can. Uh, can we get down here? That's the question. Uh, sure. We're going to go for the Vulcan. Get that small laser action going in with the Urban Mech. We got our two vision pips from jumping along. Here we go. We missed with AC-10. Not too surprising because we are relatively close. We are within that minimum firing arc. And uh, we're going to take those chances, though. We want to get that ammo down below half. So when we get critted in the internal internals, as it were, uh, we're going to do okay. Now, the question is, we should keep falling back. Um, can we get line of sight blocking terrain, however? We're playing a very dangerous game here, uh, for better or worse. Oh, man. Yeah, we're playing a very dangerous game here. Um, I think I'm going to keep playing that game. We're going to... Again, we give the right-hand arc here for the commando as much as possible. Make sure that weapons arc is still live. And uh, give some shots in while we can. Not the best chance to hit, but we're going to keep going for it. Getting our own ammo counts down, which is good. Um, finally got that mech unsettled, which is going to add up. Now, the Shadowhawk is probably going to come over here and shoot our commando, which could be a mistake. This is going to be bad. There we go. Into the commando. Thankfully, the evasion held, which is good. Um... The benefit of using terrain like this is if the AI does want to shoot you, they are going to reposition, which can relieve pressure on a um, expected uh, wraparound um, or a counterflank or anything like that. You can sometimes get the AI to reprioritize. The Op4 is going to come in there, which is pretty darn cool. Um, it doesn't always work, but it's it's going to be a gamble because this is a very tasty treat that is it's still SRM-10 on the battlefield, right? This is a dangerous combat asset that the AI has to figure out, the Op4 has to deal with. And it's down a whole torso at a leg. It's not very good. Um, and so we're playing a very dangerous game of bait right here to try to get this enemy op four to, to hook in and bite on this. Well, we can then counter wrap them. So we'll see how it goes. Sea well one one says, I don't think I've ever run a one gunnery pilot Auxiliary except in these training missions, unit. but I've had. Oh man, thank you very much for hosting the stream. Persuaded terror. Oh buddy. Oh man, how's it going, man? Oh, dude, how's your day going? Awesome, awesome emotes. And I, again, I love the name. Super fantastic. And there it is, chat. You can see some of our brand new loyalty badges going on there. Got those plugged into the channel. Oh, yeah. Big giant fist for melee fisticuffs. That's right. That's how the toaster does it. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Seawolf says, but I've had one of the AC-10 Irbys outshoot my own pilot MVP for sure. Oh, man. For sure. For sure. That's right. Oh, buddy. We're, uh, we're finally getting into this game again. We're diving into it. Mini Toast is uh, currently being handled by Mrs. Toast. And uh, that's right, Papa Toast, a.k.a. me, the Chronic Toast. We're playing ourselves some Battletech, having ourselves some fun, fine, fantastic times making mistakes along the way. So we've got Tug Bobo up here in the melee fisticuffs. We're going to leave this Shadowhawk alone for the moment. we got to finish this Panther, so we're going to go for it. it. We're going to go in here and smash and grab again with the Quad Slazers of Doom. Headbutt for the win in the back, opening up into the internal damage. Oh, man, internal structure. There it goes, there it goes. It's not quite done, but it is getting the damage in. And uh, Tug Bobo's got maximum armor on the backside for that very reason. You can see the Stinger over there is jumping around, and uh, it's not because it just wants those evasion pips. It's because it's been completely legged by our, our one gunnery urban mech, and so it really can't move that much. The AI is using a lot more jump moves 
with the new uh, version of the AI mob that's been incorporated into the latest version of Vex 3025, so it's going to be good, man. Super, super good. Persuaded Terror says, going to be lurky, long day. Just wanted to say hi to Toast and chat. Oh, man, well, thank you very much for stopping on by. Thank you very much for the lurk. Lurking is entirely encouraged. I fully understand it. And, uh, man, that's good to see you, man. Hopefully your day's going well. And uh, if it is going to be a bit of a long day, or it was a long day, hopefully we can uh, improve it just a little wee bit for you, man. Man, super, super awesome stuff. Oh, buddy. Yep. See, Stubbles over here. Uh, Flapjack. Hmm. Sure, we got full leg armor. Oh, we can't get we can't get a DFA going in there. That's a bummer. But what we can do is put our danger noodle status over here to this enemy Shadowhawk. And uh, because of the way that the latest quirks are on the mech, even though it's out of the 120 degree arc up here, this mech is still within the weapons range. So I think the urban mech has a 270 degree firing arc technically in the mod. So we'll see. I don't know if that's going to be a limitation of the mod. Eventually, it should have a 360. That'd be really cool. Um, here we go. Fire away. Oh, man. We missed with the AC-10 and the small laser. Flapjacks, you're my guttery three, man. Oh, we needed that to connect. That's rough. The Panther is rolling over and going for us, thankfully, and not, not our commando, so that's all right. Walking turret. That's right, Craig. And uh, basically, it can twerk as it murders across the battlefield. This turret spinning around and just, you know, be bopping along. Just boom, doop, 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 doop. Cruising along, just doing murder death, full speed. Urban mechs are horrifyingly scary, man. Um, they're slow, but they're terrifying. And it's pretty cool how that works out. So let's see here. 20, uh, not the best chances to hit. We're going to try to get a higher um, accuracy bonus up here again, 20%. 42 for the AC-10. Uh, sure, we're going to go for it. And we missed. Oh, man. Again, we're not going to husband our shots with the AC-10s until we get down to five or less rounds of ammo. Um, we want to get the ammunition counts down to below half in these ammo bins. We don't have case installed, so if and when we get critted, I don't want my ammo bins to explode. So if you're at half or lower on the ammo count, uh, they don't explode, which is pretty cool if you get a crit in that area, which is a nice change of pace here. I'm ready. Oh, man, this is super, super sketch. Um, we've got a lot of back armor, which is good. Um, mostly on the right-hand side. So we're going to sprint this time around. Just away with the commando. Uh, I don't want to risk this anymore. Uh, we've done a pretty good job. Uh, Shadowhawk is coming into melee. Oh, this could be bad. Oh, ho, ho, that's that's scary, man. we got to finish off these backs. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. That's rough. That's really rough. Ugh. Tug Bobo, again, we're going in for the Panther. On the back side, this mech has to go away. We have to get this taken care of so we can focus down that Shadowhawk next. Come on, get him, Tug. Headbutt in the back. 50 internal damage into the internal structure. Heat strength destroyed. Get him, buddy. Get him. Come on, come on. There it is. Tug Bobo getting the kill. CT destroyed. Somebody just got dosted. Oh, yeah. The Stinger is hopping along. It's a little bit hot, I guess. Too hot to jump and fire its missiles or um, medium lasers. They're energy missiles. Why not? They're launching photons over a distance. There you go. Range weaponry. And uh, the Merrick Lance is coming in somewhere. Apparently, it's a good thing we didn't try to just fall back because we probably would have just gotten pounced on by both of these. Uh, hmm. Flapjacks is in danger up there, which is not super, super ideal. Uh, hmm. Man, what do you want to do? I think we're going to go for the DFA on the Shadowhawk. And uh, why not? It's a one gunnery pilot. He's got a, or he's a good one gunnery mech, but he's got a little bit higher pilot, and I think it's a two. So we're going to go for it. DFA on, that's right, this Shadowhawk with pontoon in three, two, one. Aw, yeah, here we go. Oh, <laughs> and we miss. Oh, come on, pontoon, man. At least we got the small laser, but we missed. Oh, that's so painful. Oh, my gosh. Uh, we got full armor over here in the legs, so why not? We'll do a DFA over here as well. 49% chance to do it. We're going to rock and roll with this. Here we go. Secondary DFA. And we missed with both of those, too. Oh, you're killing me. You're killing me, man. Oh, four urban back legs. They all missed. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Not good. Well, we have to we have to get in and do it this time. There's no way around it. Uh, the right arm is really the 
the thing that we got to do. Shoot, that sucks. Uh, we're going to give um, Stubble Vigilance for what little it's going to do for damage mitigation and get in here and rock'em, sock'em robots. Oh, that sucked. That sucked, man. I was really hoping to at least have one foot hit that Shadowhawk. Oh, gosh. Lots of missing, lots of missing. Oh, ho, ho, there goes the leg. Oh, no. Oh, hang in there, Stubble. Don't eject. Don't eject, man. And the Merricks are still not getting in here. They're just basically sitting back and watching the chaos unfold. Um, we're going to have Tug come up here and smash and grab. Why not? We're just going to keep going to town. There it is. 50 damage. Still nothing internal. Ugh, all the small losers rolling in. There we go. We finally got a leg opened up. And our Stinger's coming up here to try to pick away on the command. Oh, gosh. Cold shot. Not good. Not good. Not good at all. Ooh, yeah, he can't even run now. Absolutely. So we are... We are committed, Craig. We are absolutely committed. We have to take this down. Um, I'm not gonna stand him up just yet. We're we're just we're just gonna keep going to town on this. Um, we can do 40 melee damage or have not a really good chance to um to hit per se. Oh man. Um, we don't have enough to do any more DFAs. So that's the. That's the question. We're just going to go for the AC-10. We don't have anything for melee anymore, so this is going to be our best bet. Uh, here we go. Oh, man. Attacking. Harry 78. Harry says, hey, Toast. Working on lots of goodies for the mod right now. Oh, man. Harry, I am loving the most recent version of this. Already, the AI seems a bit more devious, and I'm loving it and hating it. It's such a good, fantastic way. It's so good. For ladies and gents, for those of you that don't know, Harry 78 is the mod creator, the cat wrangler, as it were. Of this entire super crazy thing, man. I love it. It's so legit good. For those of you that don't know, Harry78 does occasionally stream on Twitch. Give him a follow so that way when he does go live, you can go and check him out. See what he's working on. Every now and then you'll get some sneak peeks. Super awesome, chill dude. Fantastic, man. Fantastic. Harry, I'm already loving the way that the mod, the, the AI in here is focusing down damaged mechs. Um, and I'm trying my best to figure out how I can use those damaged mechs as bait. And it's not working out very well because the AI is really, really taking advantage and making smart decisions. Um, for example, we've got a Stinger 3G up here that we legged, and it's jumping around, moving around, conserving heat, coming in here and wrecking down mechs. It's it's really, really good. So we're on a two and a half skull mission that we're under tonnage for, and we have a Merrick Lance out here somewhere. Uh, we're just trying to deal with this right now. Ugh, it's good stuff, man. I'm loving it. I'm loving it as absolutely always. So. Harry says, I'm doing a write-up for what I'm doing with the mechs at the, at the moment. Uh, lots of fun stuff and changes to just diversify different mechs. Yeah, we've already noticed um, for the urban mechs that the firing arcs are almost 270 degrees, which is super cool and fluffy. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. I love it. I love it so much. I'm here. Um, hmm. So we're going to roll over here, and uh, we're not going to do any more DFAs. Those missed. <laughs> but we are going to wreck face. Um, we got to make this. We got to make this count. So... Uh, sure, we're gonna go for the leg. There it is. We miss with the one that doesn't count as much. Oh boy, we're getting in there. Here we go. Let's see. Stubble. Oh, we're gonna we're, stand up, buddy. <laughs> we can't lose any mechs. Oh, thankfully, our right side is dealing with that. That's ugh, it's so bad. There's nowhere to go up here that's gonna be safe, as it were. Um, yeah. So we're going to try to do this as much as we can to give as much back armor to that stinger as possible. There we go. We got some of that left, so we'll try to use it. And um, there we go. And give vigilance to the commando. Not that it's going to help all that much. And uh, try to alpha down. Here we go. Come on. All the missiles. We got to crit on the LRF-5, which is something. Maybe. It's not going to be enough, though. I'm still waiting for Merrick to just come in here and wreck this stinger, and it ain't happening. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Whoo. <laughs> oh. Well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There it is. <laughs> oh, man. We didn't lose the mech. The pilot did eject out. That's probably the best resolution we could have gotten to this right now. We didn't fail the contract. Um, the pilots, they just they just flaked out on us, man. They could not handle it. 
those guys, they, those guys were not ready for the big leagues. <laughs> Thanks, Subire. Oh, man. Mission failed. Womp, womp, womp. Hamster of Wrath says, hello, all. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the channel. Hopefully your day is going well. We are uh, bumbling our way along through here. And, of course, the drop cost, we are successfully deducted because that costs money. And we got 200,000 C-bills. It's all right. It's a good faith effort, which is pretty good. We didn't break the contract. People who were escorting did. And um, we actually have normal morale for once, which is a nice change of pace. We're usually right hanging down here in this area, so that's pretty cool. Oh, man. Hamster of Wrath says, uh, <laughs> only DFA I've ever managed was dropping an Irby on a prone medium and squished it. Nice. Seawolf is out of their league there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it looks like Stubbles still survived, which is pretty cool. Um, Tug Bobo got some XP, which is nice. And our mech's in one piece. So as far as failing... That's one of the best ways we could have handled that. It's a bummer we didn't get any salvage, but the only piece that we're looking for right now is a Griffin 1N, Garrison's most favorite mech of all time. And uh, if we can get one of those, then we can definitely get in here and get another medium built up. So, hey, HBFT. Oh, man. How's it going, my friend? Oh, buddy. For those of you that don't know, HBFT does all sorts of crazy zany gaming. Man, he's doing all sorts of stuff. He's doing... Bex 3025, Battletech Revised, all sorts of cool stuff. I mean, XCOM 2, you name it, he does it. Give him a follow. Follows are free. If you get the chance, you're going to have yourselves a fantastic, fantastic time in his community. Just legit good, good stuff. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, man. So what are we dealing with here? Uh, Yang says we need to repair some battle mechs. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how this works. Hmm. I mean, I don't think we do, Yang. We've, we've only got the one that's right, right here right now. And those other mechs, they aren't ours, so it's okay. It's all right. Oh, man. Let's see here. Oh, man. Let's see. See, Hamster says, uh, quick thanks to Harry. Bex is a great mod. I keep rotating between a lot of the big mod packs. My PC is a dinosaur, so I can't handle some of the more intensive ones. Yeah, no, absolutely. Harry has done a fantastic job with balancing performance as well as content and the, the scripts and the code and the things that are run. Uh, man, Harry's, Harry's got a really, 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 really strong hand when it comes to picking and choosing things for the overall experience and balancing that. Um, I know Harry's worked on a lot of mods that have been particularly popular in the past for different games. Um, Man, I'm just super glad that Harry's managed to dive into the Battletech world over the last few years. It's super solid stuff, and I've had a chance to talk with him. Man, Harry's a fantastic guy. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Plus, his accent's pretty cool. Mrs. Toast is a huge fan, so it's one of those things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, HB. Vex is really well optimized. It's really, really, really good. And uh, there's other mods that do a lot of crazy, weird, different things and tackle different theories and concepts. Um, I mean, a, a good close second is going to be Battletech Revised. I enjoy the way that mod does a lot of things. Um, but if you like the vanilla experience and you want more of that, more, refi more refined, more content, more lore, there's nothing better out there than Bex 3025. You've, you've completed the Arano campaign. You go, I want more. Bex 3025. I've been playing this mod for almost two years now. And... It's just so good. I'm still playing it. Oh, my gosh. Like, legit, weekly, I'm still playing this thing. I've got hundreds of hours into this mod, and it's so good, man. It's so, so good. Ah, oh, so awesome. So for if anyone's curious and you haven't already checked it out, go over to the Nexus Mods page. Type in 3025 is the quickest and easiest way to find the, uh, the mods page over there. Uh, or you can click on the link that I just posted down here in chat. And if you have any more questions that maybe not be the best necessarily place to get them answered there on Nexus Mods page. On their mod page, there's a link to their Discord. You can go over there and have a huge conversation. It's a community full of hundreds and thousands of people. Um, it's super, super awesome. Good stuff. So with that being the case, ladies and gents, we've got our mechs ready to go for another mission. Let's try something else. Let's let's see if we can't get something else in the works here. Um, now, we have lost a significant number of missions here, it looks like. And I've got a feeling it's because... That we didn't quite get a good contract working our way, but that's all right. It's all part of the fun. Uh, we have a duel here, but we we don't have some good. We don't have good enough mechs for that just yet. Um, so we're gonna go and try to do an assassination. It's a one and a half skull. It's a little bit less than what we're looking for. However, we could get some cool mech pieces. So 
We're going to dive into that. We are still in the middle of our slider, so pick one, get four. 300,000 Seabills, that'll be all right. Nothing wrong with that. Working for Bob, Shugo Yamaguchi. Recently found out that Shugo is a title, not actually his first name, so that's pretty darn cool. Oh, man. And, of course, there is the Tug Bobo Meister himself. Oh, man. If you guys don't know as well, that's right. We've got a chat full of streamers today. Tug Bobo streaming all sorts of cool, crazy stuff, whether it's Bex3025, Battletech Revised, Mech Warrior Online, other crazy, ridiculous things. Occasionally, occasionally, some really weird games and some really fun, enjoyable, just interactions, man. If you get the chance, ask him about his favorite types of cheese and cheese whiz. He's got all sorts of opinions for that. It's super, super good stuff. <laughs> Hamster of Rass says, time to see how good the intel is. Spoilers, it's usually terrible. Yeah. I think Darius just does it to see what happens. I think he's bored, and he, he really wants to find out. He's like, eh, we're just going to see what happens. So we got our Vulcan down here. We're going to pull in, of course. We've kind of got a general-ish build for our Valkyrie. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it works okay. It works okay. Um... A main intercept system is pretty cool. Ignores two evasion pips or LRMs, which is all right. Unfortunately, we don't have LRMs on this just yet. Um, we're going to pull in our melee locust over here. And uh, we're going to bring in our panther as well. Twin large lasers on this. And, of course, the angriest trash can. That's right. Our Arbor Urban Mech UMR60 max armor all the way around. Twin large lasers, two small lasers, arm mods, and jump jets. And now it's got improved firing arcs. This thing is a very slow, very crunchy, angry, angry trash can, and I love it so much. As far as starting mechs go, the Urban Mech is so good. It's awesome. That's right. And, of course, the Melee Locust, the LCT-1V. This thing has a positive kill-to-deployment ratio. It kills more than it deploys. I mean, it's just, it's like, I think it's like a 1.4 uh, kills per deployment. It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so good, man. It's so good. Tug Bobo says, Cheese Whiz, North American or European. We're talking pure imported Canadian, my friend. Oh, man. That's right, HB, WTF. Yep. <laughs> Our mods on an Irby. Um, we've gotten a chance to get into fisticuffs with this thing. That's why we've got the two small lasers on it. It works rather well. It works rather well. So the question is, do, oh, Death Fox usually pilots our Locust. Uh, she's out, unfortunately. So, ooh. I think we're going to take uh, Harry, and we're going to put Harry over here into the Urban Mech, the angriest trash can. That's right. Let's see, who else do we want to put in here? What do we got floating around, man? Hmm. Hmm. We've got that hollow looking around. So we're going to put hollow over here into the Panther with the twin large lasers on this thing. Two large lasers plus. Doing good, some good work over there. What else do we want to do? Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Who else do we want to stick in there? Uh, do we have some good... Let's see. Do we have any good pilots? We need a really good pilot for this. Um, yeah, we'll put Red Potato standing by into the Locust. That's right. Get that sure-footedness for this extra melee action. And this is actually pretty cool. We've got an ER small laser, two small lasers, a melee mod, as well as a melee gyro. This thing melees for 20 melee damage and can come up with 60 additional damage. So this thing can potentially alpha in melee for 80 damage in a back arc and moving to keep all the max evasion pips. It legit works. Um, hamster, it does not have enough um, <laughs> space for an artillery, I don't think. I checked a while ago, and unfortunately, it does not fit. Um, i tell you what, though. We are going to go in here and find our next best melee pilot. It's probably going to be... We're going to leave Toast off for now. Um, we're going to put Mr. Moon Moon Prime over here in the Vulcan. Multiple shots, doing different things. It should work all right. Oh, man. Craig says Panther's my favorite light mech, followed by the Wolfhound. Yeah, the Panther's pretty good. Um, it's it's always slower than I want it to be, but then I can stick two energy weapons on it, and it just murders things. So it works out. It works out. And see who else is Firestarter. Yeah, absolutely. Firestarter is, without a doubt, a go-to light. It's, it punches heck above its weight, man. Just heck of a lot above its weight. It's super, super good. Tug says, ooh, that's the best. Canuck became... Canuck cream from the northern Duluthia is the best. It is an amazing blend of American cheese product, hints of lavender, a mild maple syrup infusion, and steeped with Molson in the vat. Yum, yum, good. Now, I've never had Molson in cheese, so if you're being serious, I'm intrigued. However, Molson Canadian is pretty good. I'm not going to say it's great, but it's pretty good. Oh, man. Hamster says Panther and Firestarter are usually my go-to. Yeah, they're, usually, they're absolutely solid picks, for sure. 
Um, but I do not cringe when I get a Locust 1v. I've had a lot of really good luck with them. So let's see. Destroy the target and escape. Assassinate. 300,000 sea bills. Pick one. Get four. One and a half skulls. This could flex up to two and a half skulls. And we are ready to go for that. Let me reach down here into the grab bag of voice them. Take a swig of my Werner's ginger ale. Oh, baby. And see what we got. Oh, man. Oh, good stuff. And I found one that we haven't used in a little bit. Here we go. We are offering a sizable bounty for the head of a local outlaw. The target is a rogue local government Mekawaya who has attacked current and personnel and facilities in this system. We need a mercenary company to find her and take her down before she takes out her aggressions on any more of our settlements. If I had to guess, Commander, I'd say the outlaw part of this is just propaganda. Outlaw or not, though, the payout's the same for us. Oh, baby. There we go. Begin that mission. Let's dive on in and see how sideways this goes. I didn't even check to see what sort of map we were on. Looks like it's going to be a desert, so it's going to be a roasty, toasty one. And that's all right with us. There's only one target that matters on this drop, Commander. Sumar's already done a flyby and determined that our target is likely to be a short distance from you. So, chat, here's the million and a half dollar question, or at least 300,000 Seabill question. What is our target? Lean close to your monitors. Zoom on in. What are we facing? I have no idea. It's hard to tell. Maybe a Wolverine? Possibly? It's hard to tell, man. Hard to tell. Let's see. Tug says, yep, DK needs me for a big mission. I'll see you all later. Thanks for streaming, and great to see you, brother. Oh, man, absolutely, Tug. Thank you very much for stopping on by. And again, ladies and gents, if you get the chance, go check out Tug Bobo. Super, super awesome dude. And the community is an absolute riot. He's the only streamer that streams on a tugboat. It's good stuff. Oh, man. Tug says, it's good in Cheese Whiz. It's good if you like Cheese Whiz. <laughs> nice. Hamster says, I can never keep a locust alive, though. They are uh, right pain biting in your ankle. Yeah. Locusts, if you can keep their evasion pips up, are going to survive fairly well. Uh, think of it as an energy fighter, uh, like boom and zoom tactics, in and out, in and out. You're going to spend some turns not fighting to keep their evasion up, and it works well. But once they get legged, they're done. They're done. Has the high shoulder pad things. Yeah, we'll find out. Not really sure what it is. I'm guessing it might... It could be really bad and big, but I don't think so. I think it might be a Wolverine. I don't know. It's hard. Hard to say. Find the target, take her out, and proceed to the LZ for evac. Good hunting, Commander. Oliviera out. Oh, man. Let's get this over with so we can go swimming. That's right, Moon Moon. That's a good, good approach. Now, we are taking a line of breast stance here. Let's see where the map boundaries are. Um, We're not really in a corner. <laughs> we're in the middle of the map. Oh, okay. So what that means is we could see flanks. We could see reinforcements show up all around us if... Those reinforcements are going to show up. Ugh. All right. So we've got our target up there. There's going to be um, enemy forces and screening forces for this outlaw. What's the best way to approach this? Let's take a moment and take a look at this. So we could just advance straight here on the right-hand side of this ridge, shield ourselves from a little bit of direct fire. we got a little bit of tree cover. we got some roads to increase our movement just a little bit here. We could go far right, right in flank, get some uh, ranging shots. I don't think that's going to work out very well. We need to be grounded and fast. We could rotate left onto the road and fight across from this and down. But the question is, depending on what this mech up here is armed with, we could accidentally pull them in and start getting direct fire on us. Um, I think we're going to advance straight forward into, into and towards these trees. It gives us a good opportunity to break out left and start rotating clockwise or continue to drop back down around and use this line of sight blocking the terrain to kind of pull these mechs in towards us. Uh, we'll see what happens. Reinforcements showing up are always going to cause a huge reevaluation. So, of course, we're going to send Harry first. That's what you do. And uh, the Vulcan goes up with Moon Moon Prime. There we go. We at least have two contacts up here. No idea if they're vehicles or mechs. And they're either in a pincer movement or a wide pincer movement, or they're in a line of breast. And we've got one out here and one over here somewhere. So we'll see. Get that uh, urban mech up there. And we're going to send the Locust... Be bopping along as fast as we possibly can up here to the left. Looks like we've got a mech and a V. This one and a half skull mission might actually flex down to a half skull. That would be fantastic, but I am not going to be holding my breath. So we'll see. Persuaded Terra says, hey, fans of turn-based games, Necromanda Underhive Wars is out on September 8th. Ooh, that's actually really cool, Persuaded. Um, I've loved um, 
a lot of the turn-based games just in general that have existed from GW, uh, whether it be, um, oh gosh, uh, not Beast Grave, not Frost Grave. There's a few that they've got out there which are really, really, really good. Um, Hex-based movements and stuff like that. But their digital games, I, they're getting better. They're getting better. Necromund Underhive, I'm pretty stoked about it. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, Hamster says they should make mechs out of the trees. The trees never fall down. It's true. They sometimes occasionally catch on fire, though. Craig says, yep, that should make Doyle happy. Oh, man, absolutely. Uh, Doyle is a huge, huge... Oh, man, I love his channel. I love his content that he produces. It's so good. It's so good. I'm excited to see what he has to say about that. So what do we want to do here? We haven't... Oh, man, I'm not going to move forward and take the risk of pulling this contact in. We're going to hit reserve and see what the enemy does. They're reserving down. They want to do the same thing. Um, that's okay. If we res play the reserve game all the way down to this back last uh, initiative phase, that works out for us because it's going to be an I go, they go, unless they have an initiative modifier down here for a mech. And that also tells us something as well, which is super, super good. Now, the cool, unfortunate thing is when uh, vehicles and, and mechs and things like this, you can't run up and melee them. So we're going to hold back with the red potato down there. Um, and we're going to have Harry move forward. Oh, not just yet. How about that hollow? Well... We're going to have Moon Moon come up here. And, who? Yep, yeah, well, Moon Moon come up here. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So we're going to brace. We're going to see what happens. The enemy turn is going to go through, and they are not reserving. And there's a Jenner up here. Okay. Uh, four medium lasers and some SRM-2s, I think. SRM-4s. So the 7D is a decent mech. If you get one of these as a starting mech, this thing is its a little light on the armor. But if you keep that movement up, it is scary. I have no idea what this vehicle is. It's legit freaking me out, man. <laughs> Harry moving up here, waddling up. Twin large lasers of justice. There we go. Bazap, bazap. A one hit, one miss. Immediately into the internal on the on torso up there. That's doing pretty darn good. Oh, and the, oh, that's not good. Our target is coming in. They're not staying separate. They're coming in to fight. I really appreciate that when the AI does this. It makes these fights a lot more dynamic and difficult. So Harry, again, kudos if that change is one of the changes in your uh, your AI mods that uh, Mech Warrior has done, as well as other things you've tweaked, um, is going to make things a lot more painful. And um, yeah, I'm appreciative of that. <laughs> one game I'm really looking forward to getting into early access, and I'll be posting up stuff on my YouTube channel, um, is going to be uh, um, Baldur's Gate 3. So if anyone's curious, I do have a YouTube channel. I can go over and check it out. Uh, there's different things that are posted up there, as well as all of our past and present adventures here in Battletech. Oh, Harry, I was just saying, uh, we're seeing, without any engagement or coming nearby, um, the, uh, the um, oh gosh, the assassination target is wa wandering in towards the combat. So I'm not sure if that's part of the AI work that a mech warrior did, or if that's other things that you've tweaked, or maybe it's just a vanilla behavior, but that's cool. It makes these these battles that much more painful, and I am super appreciative of it. That's super, super good stuff. Yeah, Craig's saying keep that mountain on the left as line of sight blocker so you can concentrate on that Jenner. Yeah, I'm not going to push too much more further forward from this. I really want to find out what this vehicle is first. Because if I can do that, um, then I can get up here with a melee locust with a red potato and just smash it to pieces. Yeah, Harry says, oh, it could be part of a mech warrior's work. Sounds great. Yeah, it's super awesome. Now, this could just be lucky that we got within sensor range and it's AI behavior. But, <laughs> yeah... It's scary stuff. Whenever your AI targets start supporting their, their henchmen and their minions, it's a painful day, and it's really, really, really good. Um, yes, Commander. Sure, we'll have Hala come up here with the Panther. Twin large lasers. That is four large lasers flowing into this. Three out of the four have connected total now. And look at that. That Jenner has got no T-shirt left. Oh, man. And they're finally unsettled. I would be just a little wee bit as well. Uh, that's going to be a large laser rolling in from, I think, our target up there. On the outlaw. Oh, that came from up here though. Maybe maybe there's another mech up there that we're missing. Not really sure. We shall see. Oh man. Hampson says, or it's part of the support force and the main target hasn't shown up yet. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a possibility. <laughs> maybe a Phoenix Hawk, absolutely. Oh man, this sucks. Um Waiting on you, Commander. We gotta keep the uh the power up on this. So I'm just gonna come over here. Sit and cover and brace. We're not going to risk the melee locust until we see what it is. Uh, it's a vedette. Okay, not super, super scary. AC2 or AC5? Uh, it's AC5 and a machine gun. There it is. There's more vehicles and support forces coming up. Uh, hamster was right. 
<laughs> there were more than just these two. There's a fourth one back here, almost guaranteed. So they were in a vertical pincer, basically a bait and tackle. Uh, they try to draw us in to get, make contact, and the forces come up. It's a good way to kind of get backwards and forwards to see where we drop. So, <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. No worries, hamster. It's all part of the adventure, man. Could be the large laser commando or fire starter. I haven't seen a large laser fire starter. I have seen a large laser commando. It's a pretty beefy little mech that's hard to take down, um, which is legit scary stuff. Everything's out of melee range here with the Locust. We're in a really bad position. We'll wait. If we have to, we can always run over here, reposition, and then wait again for the next turn. Um, we're going to move the Panther a little bit further forward. Again, we're going to pivot to the right as much as possible. Uh, just trying to protect that right arm and the twin large lasers. It's the only weapon system we have. Giving it as much protection as we can. There's a good chance that we can just completely core out this Jenner. We'll see what happens. Oh, we miss. We miss. We got an arm. Half its armament is gone, but the, the mech is still there. Oh, man. They are stressed, though. And they're repositioning. Oh, man. Yeah, this new AI is a lot, a lot better, smarter, rotating out damage units. Oh, man. That's super, super cool. Uh, we're going to jump, get another evasion pip. We're going to get up top here and uh, get some long-reach firepower. Twin large lasers. Bazap, bazap. Is that going to be enough? Not quite. Not quite. Enemy turn is coming in, and it's... Is the Outlaw Mech Warrior a Locust 1v? No. No, there's there's no way. So, well, that pip was not the Outlaw coming in. Okay. So, point of clarity, the Outlaw is still out there doing whatever it's going to do. Okay, good to know. Good to know. That's all right. Now we got to go smash and grab this. We're going to get yeah. Moon Moon Prime come up here and just smash a Locust. 70% chance to melee hit, and uh, all those small lasers. Here we go, man. Oh, buddy. There it is. Right leg destroy. Once it hits the dirt, that's going to be a pilot injury for sure. Oh, baby. Someone just got put on the ground and bolted down. Oh, yeah. Oh, hello. That's right, HB. Oh, man. What do we have wandering up here? Is this going to be... Oh, gosh. Missiles, two medium lasers... In a large laser, maybe that's going to be our target. I don't know. I don't know anymore. We got more stuff on the on the uh, the blips up here on the radar. Time to get in there and smash away. Again, me? nothing easily within range. We're going to keep reserving all the way down to see what happens, what gets closer. The vedette is getting closer as well, and I'm getting some shots in over there in AC5. It's going to add up if we don't take care of that, so we got to keep an eye on that. Uh, again, we're going to keep reserving on down and see uh -huh. what shows up. It's all part of the fun. Craig says, "Yeah, that's the primary target." You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say it's a Phoenix Hawk, but it didn't. It's got those weird shoulder pauldrons, so I'm kind of curious on what it actually is. Maybe it is. I don't know. Seems like it's uh, going to be in a little bit of an adventure over there. We're going to have to figure that out. We've got a vedette, and we've got two vedettes, two AC5 vedettes working in tandem. That's a dangerous duo right there. Got to keep an eye on that. And again, Red Potato is in a bad position. Uh, so we're just going to come down here, get all those evasion pips. Look at all those evasion pips. Oh, man. And uh, we're just going to use our ER small laser. Pop in here and do some damage if we can. Bazap. There it is. Left arm destroyed. Finally unsettled. Not too shabby. That's what I love. If you can with the melee locust, you've got a lot of flexibility with your ER weaponry. Uh, you can get in there. You can take stuff. And you keep all the evasion pips. You can do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, now, normally I'd come in here and run in. But I think we're going to take Moon Moon and try to put this locust into the dirt. Crush it down. Here we go. Stomp. Left torso destroyed. Another pilot injury. In comes the quad slazers. Bazap, 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 bazap. There it is. CT incapacitated and destroyed. Mr. Moon Moon Prime getting a kill. Someone just got dosted. Oh, no. We were right. We were right. <laughs> it's a Wolverine. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. That's the 6K, all right. There we go. Let's look at this beast. That is a chonky bot, man. That is a chonky, chonky robot. Oh, goodness. And it's 50% down on his armor, though, so that's all right. Oh, man, of course, you've got the Jenner back there as well. Go. Um, we're going to have that hollow be a little cheeky, pivot to the right again, to protect as much as possible that right weaponry. And um, we're going to try to get this Jenner taken care of. We're going to go for it. Here we go. One shot, two shot. Is that going to be enough? 
No, not enough. Not enough. Oh, they bailed. Yes. That hollow getting the kill. Superstar status. Oh, buddy. Oh, man. Doing some work. Now we just have our target and our two vehicles over here. That's not too shabby. Uh, we can get Harry to jump up here. And um, we're going to be a little bit out of danger, which is pretty cool. And we can go down here and keep just trying to get these vehicles taken care of. Here we go. One shot, two shot. Is that going to be enough? We missed with the second one. It's still in the home, man. The vehicle's still up. It's still up. Oh, boy. Craig says, yep. Wish there was an uh, Umbra skin for the Wolvies like the Shadowhawk. Yeah, so I think there's there was the Umbra skin for the Shadowhawk, and there was another Umbra-style skin for Alpha Backers with a code um, for the Atlas, I think it was. Um, well, the only way that you can get that code is, of course, if you back the game, and no one's really going to tell anyone about it. Um, but it is available, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else out there. I would love different Umbra kits. That would be really, really cool. Uh, the big question I've always had, and I've never gotten a good answer for it, and if anyone knows, whether it's here in chat or over on YouTube, please post in the comment section in the chat down below, is um, what's the lore origin for that Umbra? Does it come out at some point, like a, like a 3060? Is there a lore reason, or is it just because it looks cool? I don't know. It's really nifty because it makes mechs look really, really chunky. And um, uh, for any, any mod creators out there, whether it's Harry or anybody else, um, something that I think would be really, really cool is if sometimes your Shadowhawks that you're facing off against would have the Umber kit installed. It makes them look different. It's harder to identify them visually at a distance, um, especially on assassination missions. And uh, it would just be cool, right? It's like it exists in lore. So it's pretty nifty. I would like it. It'd be pretty cool. Uh, plus, when you run the Umber kit, you can get your logo for your ship on different parts of the armor. It looks pretty nifty. So would that be in the case... We're going to reserve to see if this target gets any closer. We're going to get shot. The Vedette's running away. I'm not too worried about that. It's going to shoot at us. We're going to have to basically come back and deal with that. And the Hamster says, yeah, just don't let the AC get in your back. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to get this target to get closer. Maybe we can get lucky. Um, maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. Crick says, I just figured it was like a one-off modification like MWO's Hero Max. They'd be cool. Um, I'm just curious, right? I mean... If there's a lore reason behind it, I'd like to highlight it because that'd be pretty nifty to dive into, but I don't know if that's true. My suspicion is you're correct. It's kind of like a hero mech, extra little add-on, cool thing. Um, but we haven't really seen a lot from it, so, you know, it is what it is. Now, we're going to be dangerous. We're going to get up here and live the life of uh, a locust with max evasion doing small laser stuff <laughs> in, in the face of a giant wolverine. Oh, okay, we're going to go for it. Fire away. There it is. Vehicle destroyed. Kill the deployment ratio maintained. Um, the question is, are we going to handle this? Oh, man. This with a large laser. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Golly gee whiz. Shiza, that was close, man. Woo. HB says, in the Tukey Flashpoint, there is an Iden's Pride Mad Cat. Ooh. That's, is, it, is it called a different name than the Mad Cat? Or does it just have a different uh, model on it? That'd be cool. I haven't gotten a chance to dive into that Flashpoint stuff yet. Uh, we're going, we're coming up to that point here in a year or two in game. We're already halfway through 3050, I think. So we're starting to get to that point where a lot more stuff is starting to happen, which is pretty cool. Uh, we're just going to continue to push forward with Repotato. There we go. Max evasion pips are going to be generated. Melee Locust. Let's get in there, Red Potato. Standing by. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Screaming along. Got those evasion pips. 20 melee damage coming in with the small lasers. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. All three hits. Damage reduction. Not too bad, man. Not too shabby. Oh, yeah. HB says it is the same model, but it's his loadout. Ah, oh, cool. Gotcha. Gotcha. Hamster says Shadowhawk is arguably, arguably the best medium, in my honest opinion. Usually takes it usually take it as an SRM punch bot. That's true. Um I I personally like the style and the flexibility of the Wolverines. They're definitely not easy to optimize though, so we'll see. Craig says they never got their fla custom flash points to pop. Oh man, that's a bummer. Well, if you have any questions about that, you can head over to the 3025 Discord page, which you can find a link to it from their Nexus Mods page. Ask them about it. There might be a way to re-enable those and get those squared away. 
Matt Chewy. Oh, man. Welcome to the chat, man. Thank you for the sneaky follow a few weeks ago. Welcome to the adventure, my friend. Hopefully things are going well for you. Oh, man. Wolverine up here. We are smashing away with our melee locust. Things are working out well. Uh, Moon Moon Prime, we can't quite get up here just yet, but we can be a little bit cheeky. We are in range of the extended range thanks to the Vulcan's uh, close quarters combat sweep. 80% on this. Let's just pound away. Bazap, 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 bazap. There we go. Small lasers for the win. And <laughs> we're getting in there. We're getting in there. Oh, Seawall. Seawall says Dervish. I love those SRM boats. We lost our Dervish last last uh, session that we streamed, unfortunately. It was the first medium that we've ever built in this playthrough. It's also the first Dervish I ever built. It was painful, man. It was painful. Uh, again, we're going to pivot here to the right. We're just going to pour all of our firepower, twin large lasers, everything we can into this target. We got to crack the armor. We got to get into the internals and start making things fall off. Ooh, Creek says wyverns. Wyverns are really, really, really fun. Um, I haven't had a chance to really mess with them too much in game, but they are a blast. It's super, super cool. Uh, large lasers are going to get in here. Now, keep in mind with the latest version of 3025. You can rotate beyond the indicated 120 degree arc for some mechs. Urban mech can rotate up to 270 degrees and still keep things in its fire arc. Um, the reason I'm not doing that just yet is because I'm trying to keep that frontal armor available to be as ablative as possible before we start rotating to different arms and stuff. Um, so I'll do my best to handle that if I can, and I'll show you here as well. Um, now, normally you just sit here and keep meleeing, but we have a locust. We have a locust, uh, or basically our melee locust. You don't want to do that. You're going to get squished. So we're going to move as fast as we can, keeping as many evasion pips as we can, trying to get to the next target to melee, or for our weapons fire, we've got an ER small laser, so we can make that work. Some shots in over there. And uh, next turn, we'll hopefully full move into melee somewhere, and it'll be all right. Now, let's see. Red Potato's over here. We can't quite move with him just yet, but we can with Harry. So we're going to show off some stuff. We're going to jump a little bit closer. Now, here's what's really cool about the latest version of Vex 3025. There's been a huge overhaul on the AI, additional pilot quirks, mech quirks, things like that. It's super, super cool. Um, so again, many, many kudos to Harry. Legit awesome stuff. But you can see normally you'd rotate through 120 degrees and that'd be all you get. And once you rotate out of that, you're you're done. But for some mechs, especially mechs like the Urban Mech, which has a big extra amount of rotation from the turret, you can keep on going until it finally falls out of arc at about 270 degrees. Now, keep that in mind that this is a fixed 120 degree arc on the front of the mech and use this as an indicator for how much fire is actually, you know, coming in. If you're in this front arc, chances are you're going to get damage coming into your CT in the front arc, which is pretty cool. If you're actually rotating through the sides, suddenly you're going to be getting more damage on your sides, potentially into your back over here, which is pretty darn cool. So we're going to do this. We're going to rotate and show our back, which is pretty awesome. Look at this. Shaking our tail feather here at this target and we're still rotating the head over. And I get some shots in. And uh, there we go. Into the internal damage on the arm and the torso. Nice, nice, nice. Craig says, my 3025 full run of playthrough is up to 3042. and have yet to see any other of the custom flashpoints. Oh, that's a bummer, man. Yeah, we uh, we did a 3025 playthrough on stream here. And we got to 3028, 3029. That was the previous one. You can go find it over on our YouTube page. Just search The Chronic Toast. Um, additionally... Uh, on my vanilla playthrough, we've gotten to about almost 30-40. We've put a lot of time into that and uh, done some good stuff. But here, we are playing, trying to keep our alliance with the Outworld Alliance, and it's 30-50, so the clans are invading. It's scary, scary stuff. Um, absolutely. So let's see. That hollow we're down there with the Panther. We're going to send Moon Moon Prime up here to basically rock em, sock em robots. We're going to stand outside of cover because I want to keep the pressure on this right-hand side. I want to keep working through this, trying to get into the CT if we can. So we're going to punch and crunch and work our way through. Oh, man. There it is, into the internals. All this laser's going in. Can we get the torso to pop up? Not quite yet, but we did destroy a small laser. That is going to help when this Wolverine inevitably decides to turn around and punch us. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be painful, so... Harry says, uh, just put a small write-up on the implementations channel of Discord about what I'm working on right now. Might be of interest. Ooh. I will definitely, definitely have to go and check that out, Harry. That's super, super cool. Yeah, dude. Oh, man. 3025 is legit good stuff. It's it's fantastic. So, oh, man. 
Oh, and Harry, if you're ever looking for um, any pilot to uh, get added in as a streamer pilot into the uh, the mod, I've already got a picture. I've got stuff squared away. Just let me know, man. Just let me know. I we totally would love to get to the mod, man, as a pilot that it could be picked up. That way, I could have like Bunny and everyone else. Oh, man, it'd be so cool. It would be so awesome. So let's see. Do we want to get up here and melee with the uh, the Panther? We really don't. Um, I'm going to come over here. We are not worried about being hot just yet. I'm going to keep the uh, damage that's potential from this Wolverine to come in over here. And I'm going to try to get this Vedette taken care of so that we can just worry about not having anything in our back over here. And uh, our back arc, we can just dive on in. So, Bazap, Bazap, two large lasers. Is that enough? It is. It is. Yes. We have completed the enemy force destruction, and now we only have the Mecha Warrior up here to tackle. Oh, man. Harry says, pass over the picture. Oh, dude, awesome. Now, I'll, I'll definitely send it over, and um, if it shows up and gets in the game, cool stuff, man. No worries. Oh, that's so cool. Sweet. Let's see. Hmm. What to do? So, can we get back into melee? Do we have enough movement? We don't just yet, so we're going to hold off with that. We're actually going to play the reserve game all the way down. It's a dangerous game to play right now because the Wolverine gets to move, but it might be close enough now to get in there and do some melee. Now, we do have internal structure exposed in the Vulcan. That's nothing new. Um, it is what it is, but... Waiting on you, Commander. Oh, pretty close, pretty close. We're going to get our small lasers in anyway. Boom and zoom, all the movement intentionally, trying to keep those evasion pips maxed out if we can. There we go, small laser, small laser, two hits and a miss. It is what it is. Let's see, Moon Moon Prime, we're going to get up here and smash and grab yet again, trying to continue to work on that front and right side as much as possible. There we go. Went to the armor, nothing internal, so we did not get that right side. And the bazap, bazap, and the t-shirt sleeves are off. It is definitely tank top time. And we're going to have Harry come over here and uh, jump a little bit closer. That's right, point blank damage, man. Getting all of those small lasers rolling through. We're going to lose a little bit of heat. Keep the small lasers up. Here we go. A solid hit and a miss. Not too shabby. And that should potentially give us enough overhead to get two more large laser shots going off or some melee action and lose some more heat. Now we're in a good spot here. We can continue to flank and start wrapping around this target, trying to force them to get out into the open if they decide to bail rather than trying to keep them over here into the forest. And uh, we're going to do that by trying to get the pressure on with this Vulcan and continue to work around to force this AI out of this cover if they have to move. Otherwise, they're going to get shot in the back, and that's not ideal. So twin large shots. Here we go. One shot, two shots. There it is. Man, they're done. They're done. Oh, baby. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, man. <laughs> so good. So good. Hamster hey, so says, Vulcan bit like a melee locust, but someone forgot to tell it's a medium. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. It is. I really, really like the versatility of the Vulcan. Um, some people get really, really upset and frustrated by getting a, a melee locust or a locust or a Vulcan. Um, I found good ways to be very efficient with them. Uh, unfortunately, we're stuck with them for a long, good while. We're playing eight pieces per part or to build a mech. Very, very difficulty, uh, very high difficulty settings as far as low resources, low salvage, low income, all that stuff. So all targets eliminated. Sit tight and I can collect you from where you're at right now. Well, thank you very much, Seamar. Oh, man. That's right, HB. I'd go higher if there was a setting that was more than eight pieces in the in the mod. So if, if Harry wants to put in more than eight pieces, <laughs> I'd be down for that. I would switch it over at a heartbeat. Uh, it just make, It changes how you play and how you choose your salvage and what you do. Um, because it's just that much more difficult to build mechs. They have a lot more value. Intrinsically, they're worth more. They're bigger assets on the battlefield. Um, and it's just, it's much more of an investment, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, eight pieces. It, it's, like I said, we built our first Dervish, and then we lost it. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Harry says, well, now you get three parts max in the list from a mech now, so it's harder to collect before then in, at eight. Absolutely. That's what I love about it, man. It is legit good stuff. So, so good. And uh, I'd still push for uh, 10 pieces or 12 pieces if you have it, man. Absolutely. Even if you can only get so many, it just means that you're going, you can't just necessarily take an assassination mission and then say, yep, I'm going to do max salvage. I possibly can get a mech. I'll be good, right? Masochist. Absolutely, man. Anything to do to make it harder without making it um, 
just harder for hardness's sake. Um, I like to take the approach that mechs are difficult to build, right? They're, they're, they're somewhat rare. We're lucky that we're going in as a mercenary company. We're likely going to see mechs, right? Um, but what that means is they're intrinsically have a lot more value if they, if you have to work for them, if they're harder to build all that crazy stuff. Um, yeah, Biscoff says, uh, would play where if you fail, you lose parts. Absolutely, man. Um, I like the idea. That's why I have CT destruction on. If the mech blows up, it's gone. Like, that's it. Um, I would really, really enjoy an option to, if you have to withdraw from a mission and you have a downed mech behind, you, you lost it. That, that's it. You know, the, the op four overran you, you're done. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, I would love I would love something like that because if the op four loses or bails, we get their stuff. If we have to bail and lose, they could get our stuff if it's left behind. Like I would I would totally be down for that. Absolutely. So if a pilot ejects and you have to withdraw for a mission, you lose the mech, man. Uh, that would be a really cool feature to add because again, it changes your dynamic on how you approach the overall tactics and pace of combat and what you're gonna do for risk versus reward, which is pretty cool. So so let's see what we got 367,000 sea bills and we have a little bit of repairs to do on the Vulcan. No surprise there. A lot of good kills here. Jenner parts are pretty awesome. Oh man, this is a different. Oh, that's right. That's right. Harry went in and updated some different things here. After choosing priority items, you received the three additional pieces of salvage. Cool. This is pretty cool. So previously you only had two numbers here. Uh, let's see what Harry has to say. I'm curious what these extra numbers all mean. So the AE pieces, you need to find 2.66 of a mech and get a full salvage on all of them. Cool. Previously, if you went max salvage, you could still get a full mech even at eight pieces per salvage. Yeah, no, I agree. Maxing it at three pieces is, is good for game balance. Uh, the salvage work is MCB's work. Ooh, okay. I'm curious what this means. My assumption is we have five pieces of this variant and six overall of other variants. But I don't know what this additional eight versus zero is right here. Eight versus one. Not really sure. Uh, I'd be curious to know what that means. But we are looking and hunting for mediums. Um, I would like to get a Jenner put together. But again, we're not going to have enough parts to build one at eight pieces. So we're going to prioritize grabbing the Wolverine piece, the, the 6K. Um, yeah, it's going to be useful if we can build one of those eventually. So. Craig says 6K is a nice mech. Yeah, I like it. Of the of the two Wolver main Wolverine variants you see early on, in like 3025 and through a little bit later, the 6K is my favorite. Uh, eight means parts needed. Uh, Harry says the zero at the end is how many of that mech you have. Okay. So we have interesting. Seven and 13, eight and one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I get it now. So chat, what this means, and Harry, correct me if I'm wrong here, if, I, if I'm misunderstanding this. So we have seven, for example, this Locust 1V. We have seven pieces of this 1V variant. We have 13 pieces overall of all of the Locust variants. We currently have eight pieces to build a mech, and we have one uh, LCT-1V in our storage right now. Is that an understanding? That's, that's what I think is set up for that. That's pretty cool. Let's see, what else do we have down here? We've got a couple cool things. Not too shabby. Yep, Craig says we're good. Awesome. That's this is actually really cool. This is a good indicator to kind of see where we're at. That's cool, and I like that. I like I really, really like that information. So again, shift click to sell items, which is super, super cool. And so we don't need an SRM4. We already have five, so we're gonna hit that shift and click. I love this feature. It makes inventory management so much easier. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. All right. Let's see here. What do we want? What do we want to do? that continue button i think we're gonna dive on in and see what we got floating on here should be all right so that's the question what are we gonna do next what's the next mission i think we'll dive into one more and we'll see what we got we're gonna take a little swig of burners while everything loads oh yeah Ah, good stuff, good stuff. Oh, man, what is this? Assemble a mech. Oh, man. Concerning the Locust LCT-1V house, the basic Locust 1V has one big advantage, speed. 
It's not meant to put up much of a fight, but you'd be hard pressed to find a mech that goes better and is harder to hit. Let's see. Oh, man. So we could build some stuff here. Uh, we probably should build a 1v. Um, kind of, this is a really cool interface. Nothing or one of the variants. This is really, really nice. This is a huge upgrade. I really, really like this. Um, man, this is cool. Now, our own house rules, we're not going to mix and match of different pieces to build different variants until we get all of the Argo upgrades unlocked. Uh, we're actually getting pretty close to doing that with the Argo, which is pretty cool. So in the meantime, we're just going to build the 1V. We've got eight parts for it. We'll throw another one to the storage just in case. Should be good. And if we could sell it, ready it, um, we're going to leave it in storage. It should be all right. That's a really slick interface. I really like that. Harry, man, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Thank you for including that. That's super, super awesome. Let's see. Uh, Craig says, ah, okay. Yeah, absolutely, man. The 1E, though. Oh, dude. The 1E is a murder boat. It is so good. It's so good. All praise to MCV. Yeah, man. It's good stuff. Hamster says, I rarely get past 100 days in game before my head gets turned around by another mod pack. It's a condition. Yeah, um, I actually have... Uh, I'm running primarily Bex 3025 on my current rig. On my render rig, I'm keeping up to date with uh, Battletech Revised, kind of where they're at. They're still going through a lot of additional features and tweaks and stuff like that. Uh, the, game, it's, the mod is fantastic. It's super, super good. Uh, but Bex 3025 is just stable, steady, consistent releases. And it just, it's optimized. It's, it's so good, man. It's so good. It's so good. I love it. I highly, highly encourage it. It's legit awesome stuff. So if you can, check it out, man. Check it out. If you're looking for a long haul mod, this has enough just gold and water and whatever else you want at the bottom of the well to come back for 30, 40 years in game and continue to see new stuff, new material. It's, it's fantastic. It's so good, man. See, uh, Craig says, uh, I do the same with BTA does an update, but I keep coming back to Bex. Yeah. Battletech extended. It's testament to Harry and, and, the, and the team that he's built around him and those that have helped out over the years and just the vision and stuff. It's good stuff. And for those of you that are kind of wondering why I'm heaping all this praise onto Harry, it's quite frankly because he deserves it. Um, it's a passion project. He's done good stuff at it. And it's not just because we're trying to, you know, be like, oh, we're playing the mod by the mod creator. He's here. We're going to, you know, praise him up. It's it's legit honest thanks. Like, Bex 3025 is one of the primary main reasons I'm continuously still playing this game over and over and over again. There is so much replayability. The gameplay loop that you got addicted to in vanilla has been enhanced and it's still here in a better form in the mod. It's so good. It's so good, man. Yeah. Hamster says, yeah, I spun Bex onto the clan invasion and went, <laughs> went to have a chat with him. Did it go well? Uh, so we are basically acting as privateers. We're the bread box privateers allied with the outworld Alliance. And uh, we were sent out here. The, the theory and the narrative is right. We were sent out here to cause trouble in this territory. Right. And uh, generally, we've done enough missions that Karita loves us, even though they're not supposed to. But hey, it is what it is. Um, and the clans up here are invading. Now, this is actually even more doubly so kind of a, a sweet story for myself personally, because I know next to nothing about the clan invasion. I know what happened. I know they have different mechs. I know there's some cool stuff floating around. But I don't know a lot of the lore. And so every time we run into something new, like the Russell Hague Republic, what was that? I didn't know. And so getting a chance to experience this really for the first time, both lore-wise, because Bex 3025 adheres so good to the lore, so close to the lore, is super cool. I have no idea how far this is going to go. I don't know if the Russell Hog is going to be squeezed down, get destroyed immediately. Like, I don't know, man. It's a fun, fun adventure and ride, and we're in it for the long haul. My guess is we're going to be continuing to play this playthrough long after Christmas, and we'll see what happens. Um, we'll probably be getting up to 3053, 3054, maybe, uh, before we decide, yep, we're, we're good to go and start another playthrough yet again. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff floating around, man. I really, really enjoy this stuff. It's so good. But with that being the case, let's look for another contract. Let's see. Lost Air is a recovery on Polar. That could be pretty cool. Uh, we are above 2.5 million C bills. So what that means is we are going to be prioritizing salvage. Oh, man. Oh, Craig. Sorry, man. Anything that looks like a link automatically gets rejected. Uh, we've had a few issues in the past. Uh, what Craig was saying is previously that Harry is a god. Also, you can spend hours on Sarna.com uh, just looking up lore or Sarna.net, whatever the actual website is. So no worries, Craig. You're good to go, man. You're good to go.
Yeah, you're good to go, man. <laughs> if you want to post a link, just ask here in chat. Yeah, no worries, dude. You're cool. You're cool. And everything will be just fine. Um, ooh, destroy base, blackout. These are really cool missions. Uh, it's extra long. We're not going to tackle that today. Uh, I think we're going to try to do a recovery. We're trying to get in here and get a bit more uh, Seville's built up. We're going to prioritize salvage on this. Not all the way because you get hardly any um, uh, cash, but we're going to slide it up here. Pick three, get 12. Not too shabby. Uh, 84,000 Seabills. It used to be that if you prioritize all this, like this max cash, you got no salvage. And sometimes if you prioritize salvage, you wouldn't get any cash, but we're going to leave it here. 84,000 Seabills. That should cover our drop costs, maybe a few repairs. And uh, pick three, get 12. Not too shabby. Again, making the pirates really, really mad. No surprise there. That's all right. Oh, uh, shoot. Well, ladies and gents, we got to put time back on the clock. We got to repair some mechs first. And uh, once we do that, then we'll dive back into this mission. Let's see. Uh, fire start is being automatically repaired already. And uh, we don't want to talk to Yang. We want to get in here and repair our vehicle here. One day, 7,000 C bills. Put a day back on the clock. Here we go to July 7th. There it is. All work orders completed. And we got our fire starter back as well. Not too shabby. Let's go back to that contract. Let's dive on in. <laughs> oh, man. Harry says, pirates need to eat too. You are a murderer. A murderer. Moida. It's true, Harry. Thankfully, the last uh, playthrough we had, we were pro-pirate. We allied with them. We did all the things we could for them. Uh, so it's kind of a, a give and take, man. It works out. It works out. <laughs> Yeah, there are Steam achievements for taking the extremes for payment. Absolutely, Craig. Uh, I don't know if I have those yet. I think I do. Um, but we're going to dive into this again. We're going to take prioritizing here at Salvage. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Moon Moon, Hollow, Harry, and Potato are all tuckered on out. We've got our fire starter up here. Um, you know, I think we're going to leave this here. We're going to leave the exact same dream team rolling around. It should be all right. Uh, who do we have up here? We've got Sarvik up here doing the shooting. Man, Sarvik, if you're out there watching, hopefully your day is going well, my friend. Hopefully your evening's going all right. And if not, hopefully when you watch this on VOD, it works out all right, man. And uh, who else do we have for some good shooting? We've got Flavalicious. What Flavalicious down here? What else do we got floating through here? What do we got, else? We've got rolling around? Let's see. Hmm. You know what? We're going to put Tin Can Pops over here in the Vulcan. That'll be all right. And uh, why not? We'll grab Don Zappo. And put them over here in the Locust. Uh, should be okay. Got that extra sure footing. Got the central lock of stuff's out of range. Um, generally got some pretty good gunnery. This is a pretty decent pilot for this mech, and it should work out. All right. Oh, man. Let's hit the deploy mission button, and it says, we need more firepower. I think we'll be okay. It's only a two skull. Um, what? <laughs> huh. So this two skull might flex to a three. We'll see what happens here. I didn't think we were under tonnage, but I guess maybe we are. We'll see what happens. Hamster says fighting pirates is great. They make interesting make choices. Oh man, they have some really cool stuff. I really like them. Um, yeah, dude, super, super, super good stuff. Let's see. Retrieve the local government VIP and escape. All right, so basically murder everything and bail. Unless we have to just grab and go, we can do that. We've, we've run into that before. So you reach down to the grab bag of voice them. Let's see what we get. Some people on YouTube call me the Viceroy of Voices. Oh, man. The scion of a local government mercantile concern has been missing for months. We suspect a kidnapping by the pirates, but there's been no ransom demand. A local group of sympathizers on Osmosar recently picked up a garbled message from the scion indicating that she's being held in a pirate facility there. Our intel failed to trace her to Osmosar, so any loyal mercs or mechs are several jumps away. We need your help to extract her. Looks like the planetary government is ready over re, is really over a barrel here. My kind of customer. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. This is a straightforward retrieval. Locate the VIP and get to the evac zone. Oh baby. First step, find our target in the location of the last known signal. And extract safely. Keep the mech carrying the VIP in one piece. Best of luck, Commander. Darius, why why can't why can't Sumar just pick us up back over here? We get in, we get out. We don't have to we don't have to go through everything. Oh man, let's go. Let's see here. 
We're in a corner, so we're not likely to see reinforcements on either of our left or right flanks, only on the opposite sides. People in chat are talking about the Toro mech being very, very rare. Ooh, interesting. Yes, we're going to basically just face first That's into that. this whole situation and uh, deal with the mechs as they are here. And hopefully wipe this out, get on point, and then bail is the goal. That being said, everything is going to potentially be up for reevaluation once the enemy makes contact with us. The two skull here, we only see one mech. No idea what it is. We're going to keep reserving. We've got our evasion pips. We're going to wait and hold on this until they get a little bit closer. There's a second mech, still part of this main lance. There's likely going to be a third, maybe a fourth. We'll see. There's another one moving around. So there's a third one. The question is, will there be four mechs or not? Uh, we reserved all the way down. Right now, it looks like there are only three likely from this lance. We're doing that deduction based off of our goals, who's available on the map, and who's still moving. So we shall see. Uh, we're going to have the Vulcan come up here in our, at nearly point-blank range. And uh, what are we dealing with? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh. Hamsters say only three mechs, but they're all atlases. We've got a Phoenix Hawk. We've got a Crab 20. We've got an AC-20 Hunchback. Oh, oh man. Oh. oh, the huge manatee. That's right. That's right. Oh, gosh. This thing right here, it, it just breathes on our locust and we're done. We're done. The crab is dangerous because of the twin large lasers. Otherwise, it's not too terribly scary. And the Phoenix Hawk is just really, really annoyed, but... Oh, God. <laughs> Buckle up, chat. It's going to be an adventure. Oh, man. <laughs> They're fully armored, too, by the way. Yep, that's the AC-20 HUD sheet. Yep, yep. And we're bringing three lights and a medium that's technically a light. They're all fully armored, too, so... Yes, Commander. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. We're going to be jumping, keeping terrain between us and all of our targets if we can, and trying our best to get good shots in. And we're missing. Oh, my gosh. Wow. 60% reduction. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, this is a problem. <laughs> yeah, this is a really big problem. These are really skilled up pilots. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gents, I believe we have ourselves a problem. <laughs> if we need to withdraw from this, we definitely, definitely will. And going after this Phoenix Hawk might have been the bad decision to pour all our firepower in. However, it keeps us close to this mountain over here and our ability to kind of bail back around that so yeah craig's asking how close the border is to that mountain uh there is no border so we're going to get into this and then we can basically bail back out here or start working our way around it really depends what these guys decide to do i'm assuming they're going to come down here into the forest and we're going to be in a really really rough spot um but that's why we're kind of tackling this first we could go to the right and jump on these guys throw out in the open they've got a lot of evasion uh basically they're starting their their turn here a little bit of protection that way but Oh, we would have no good, easy way to, to hide up here. And it'd be really bad. So we are in a bad, bad spot. There, make no mistake about it. It is legit, legit scary stuff. So we're going to start maneuvering, getting our shots rolling in as much and as best as we can. Try to get this armor off this Phoenix Hawk. Um, we're going to leave our Vulcan here as long as possible. I'm Not ideal. Um, uh we're going to leave the Locust there. It's got evasion. We have to trust and hope that it's going to be good enough. Um, We're going to move over here. We're going to jump over here, actually. We're in a cold biome. We can do it. We can take the heat. Um, Protect that right arm as much as possible. And uh, keep those shots rolling. we got really good chances to hit right now. Um, and even though the damage is significantly, significantly tanked on here, it should be okay. Tin can pops. We're going to get in here. Bail the left-hand side. Again, giving ourselves an extra pip of distance and maybe we can bail around and get in here and melee and some stuff oh man do his money and bunny man does dfa it's true oh we missed we missed oh man oh that's not good unfortunately we don't have a lot that can jump on things 
So that's part of uh, part of the shindig right now. Um, actually, ladies and gents, we are going to be sneaky. Uh, we are going to try to do our best to get in the flank over here and turn these mechs around. Oh, man. Buckle up, Don. <laughs> it's going to be an adventure. Oh, gosh. Maybe we can get some flanking shots. Oh, man. Oh! Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm taking internal damage. Oh, that's painful. That's really painful. Oh, gosh. Oh, the huge vanity, man. The huge vanity. Armor breach. Internal damage. Oh, man. Yeah, the hunchback is pretty slow, hamster, but those AC-20 rounds are pretty fast. Oh, what's the damage? Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep, that's a problem. Um, uh, hmm. Actually, I think we're going to pick up the VIP with a locust and potentially just bail on out of this whole situation. I think that's a pretty solid opportunity. Uh, we're going to stand here. We're going to give them vigilance. Hang in there, tin can pops. And we're going to melee. We're going to melee. Oh, gosh. We missed again. Oh, my golly gee whiz goodness. Holy wah. That's not good. That's not good at all. Thankfully, the Phoenix Hawk is repositioning. That gives us an opportunity to start making a fighting retreat, retreat if we have to. The evac zone is on the far side. Oh, not good. Commander. Oh, we, we're, gonna, we're not even going to move this Locust until they go. We're going to get in here, grab the VIP, which could be horrible, and then bail. Uh, we ha we had to start coming back and fighting, unfortunately. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. Pretty good chance to hit, but still. Oh, man. They're not taking the bait. The AI is definitely smart. Uh, so we are in a really difficult position right now. And that's all right. We'll fight from cover if we have to. It'll be okay. Urban Mix up here. Not the best chance to hit, but we're going to take it. One shot going in. Doing all right. Finally get the arm ripped open. Whoo. All right. All right. Let's take a moment and think about this. We are in a line of breast formation. We are trying to envelop a very crunchy, very angry, angry, angry foe. That's got all skills, everything else they need here. The standard approach of wipe and bail is not going to happen. We do not have the endurance on our mechs to make that work. Um... So, we're going to focus on the mission, which is a problem because we've got an urban mech. <laughs> if we can get the VIP, oh, man, this is rough. This is very, very rough. Hmm. We will see. Yeah, the concern is we can go to the mountain. We could try to get them closer if we need to. Oh, gosh. More damage. Thankfully, the Hunchback is not in cover, so we can dogpile that and try to get that right torso taken care of. We're going to keep reserving. Oh, I'm oh man. What's going to go on? What's going to happen? They're hanging out in the forest. Not ideal. Not ideal. Oh, gross, 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 gross. Yeah. All right. We can actually we can actually pick up this person and get some shots, and so we're gonna do it. You're in the area of the last known signal. Hold position and give the VIP a chance to board one of the mechs. Yeah, we're gonna let him board the locust. The Ugh. Oh gosh. <laughs> the asset is hand, Commander. Good work. It's on board. Okay, good to know. Uh, we gotta give. This is this is our last medium. That sucks. Yep, we got we got to give our locust a chance to survive this. Uh, so we're gonna go in and attack and give vigilance again to Tin Can. Here we go. Go get him, buddy. Oh man! Finally, we connect. Fifty damage going in. All the firepower that we can muster. It's not great. It's really not great. That's right. Make like a tree and leaf. Oh man, the fetus hawk is rolling around out here and not shooting us. That's really that's a relief. That's good. Um, uh, do we dogpile this continuously? It does have bulwark and it's, or not bulwark, uh, cover. We're going to go up here with fisticuffs on the Phoenix Hawk. Oh, man. AC-20 to the face next round. Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, this is how we roll, man. 
we're we're in it at the bottom of the well, 15 feet down below the water level. It's going bad. So, bazap, bazap, damage rolling in. Oh man, ick, ick, ick. We're fighting a lance of mediums. Don can go. Don, get out of here, man. You got you got to bail. Where's our evac zone? Where's where's our evac zone? Way up here. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna spread up there. You got to get the VIP out. Let's go, man. Yeah, I took a turn to cool. That's not good for us. Uh, Flavalicious. Oh man, not good. We're gonna use this patent pending rotation here to try to keep as much armor towards the things that we know of. And uh, try to murder death the hunchback, I guess. Um, going up there follower and small lasers over here. Oh, man. Thank you very much for the follower, Hamster of Wrath. Oh, man. I'm going to make sure you get your name added into the pilot pool that we pull our pilots from. Oh, buddy. Dude, super, super cool stuff. So there we go. Multi shot with small lasers and large lasers. Oh, buddy. There it is. There it is. Come on. Two shots plinking in on the crab. It's a, it's a, we're trying to run away with an urban mech. Oh, gosh. Oh, right leg destroyed. That's not good. And we're down, too. Oh, no. Oh, no, man. Oh, tin can. Hang in there, buddy. Injury avoided, thankfully. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. That's bad. That's really bad. Oh. All the rest of the armor looks good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the rest of the armor looks good. This is fine. This this is fine. Everything is fine. Oh man. Um. Hmm. We're gonna jump again a little bit closer, and continue to just lay in all the firepower we can with our melee urban mech, the angriest trash can, into this hunchback. Oh goodness, the Phoenix Hawk is alive again. It's rolling in. Yeah, though Harry says I just got knocked back a lot of phases because of that new hunchback component. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Says, hey, if you get the VIP out, it's a win. Absolutely, man. 100%. And uh, we've got we've got a few uh, subscribers in the queue for new pilots. Oh, my thing is I don't want to lose that mech, but How's it going? we got to do what we got to do. So we're going to jump over here. Again, protecting that right arm if we can. If we can get rid of this AC-20, it's going to help us out quite a bit. Jumping over here with the Panther. Firing away. We are at heat load capacity. We miss. We miss with one. Not ideal. Not ideal. Oh, man. Uh, Don Zappo. Yep. Keep sprinting, buddy. <laughs> oh, goodness golly gee whiz, man. Not good. Not good. This is a good scenario, though, of an indication that, uh, you know, we could just eject our other pilots and bail on out. It kind of feels a little cheeky, but we'll see what happens. It's not going to be good, though. It's not going to be good. Our CT is not going to survive much more, so that's not perfect. Uh, all right, Tin Can, you're going to eject, man. Bail on out. Reach towards that stratosphere. Poof. There we go. Tin Can pops. Reaching out towards the stars. And uh, the AC-20, thankfully, missing as it goes after the Panther. Oh, man. Not good. This has been a very expensive mission that we prioritized salvage on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're not we're not making money on this one. That's for sure. That's absolutely for sure. <laughs> Crap. Crap. There we go. Don Zappa's up there. We've, we've gotten the person where they got to go. Ooh. Ick, 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 ick. Salvaging your own mechs, possibly? Yeah. that's. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. And uh, with that being the case, we are nearly out of time for the day. I hear many toasts in the background. So we will bail on out. We will do the cheesiness. We will eject our pilots. Contract says we're good to go. Mission successful. There we go. Oh, man. <laughs> Excellent work, Darius says. I don't think so, man. That's expensive. That's really expensive. Oh my goodness. We 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 got our eighty four thousand dollars. Eighty four thousand sea bills and no salvage. Seventy thousand sea bills. Oh yeah, yeah, it's bad. 
It's really, really bad. We managed to keep <laughs> we managed to keep the Vulcan alive though. This is our only medium right now. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, ugh, so bad. So gross. So gross. But see, this is what I love about this this entire mod is you're never quite sure what you're gonna run into. These were well trained, well coordinated, and fully armored pilots and mechs. <laughs> you can't take just just half arsed, you know, approaches to these things, which is a lot of times what we do and Oh man, it's so good and it's so heartful. <laughs> Why do you got to do me like that, Harry? I love it so much, man. It's so good. Ah, uh, well, that'll be the case for now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna come up here and hit that save button. Make sure this gets saved, does not get corrupted. We will put our mechs back together during the next stream, and uh, we'll dive on it and have a good time. Uh, mini toast permitting, you will be able to catch us again at 1 p.m. or no, 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Uh, a week from today, next Sunday. And again, thank you very much for letting me stream and get the opportunity here to hang out with all you fantastic, wonderful people. And uh, we will, if you want to stick around, we're going to try to find someone to raid. And uh, yeah, always, always good time. So as always, thank you very much. Have a good one. Catch you later.